Before we begin, there's going to be some spoiler kingdoms and post-game content on this list and you'll see the names of those in the next few seconds. You've been warned. So if you don't want to see them, watch this top 10 after you beat the game. But anyway guys, I made sure to 100% Mario Odyssey before making this list so I could be sure I experienced everything about each kingdom. This list is based off how unique the kingdoms are and how much fun they were to play through. So without further ado, let's -a go! To start off, we have the beautiful Lake Kingdom. And when I say beautiful, I really mean that. Just look at how gorgeous and relaxing this place is. The colors are really light and soft, further enhancing its beauty. When I first played this level, I just thought, oh no, a water level, but Mario Odyssey manages to make traveling through water fun. Yes, I said that. The water is fun to travel through. While Mario's swimming controls are definitely fantastic and comparable to Mario Galaxy, you can capture a cheap cheap which provides even simpler and easy to use controls. Plus, you don't have to worry about holding your breath. The water has so many interesting things within it. The underwater pillars are a delight and there's a lot of well-hidden purple coins too. You'll also find this underwater globe which is somehow not filled to the brim with water. I guess there's some sort of force field surrounding the holes? I don't know. Inside is the Crazy Cap store and a room holding a wedding dress. Well, at least after you get it back. I love the versatility of entrances for this globe. There's like two or three different ways to get inside and that's really nice, honestly. And of course, the zippers are a great addition to extending this level out with more goodies. There's even this entire section dedicated to using the zippers as platforms for finding hidden moons. And at the end, you'll grab the zipper and tear about half the level and you'll watch a million Goombas perish into the underworld. It's satisfying. Heck, they even threw Dory in the water just because. I think it's actually the first time seeing Dory completely submerged in the water too. There's this part where you have to dive down into this water tunnel that's just so immersive. You really feel so enclosed and there's this pressure of wondering if you'll find air when you get to the bottom or if you do at all. It's kind of creepy. And of course when you get down there Captain Toad's just chilling with his camp and that figures. And to think I've been able to talk so positively about the number 10 spot goes to show how incredible the kingdoms are in this game. They didn't! They didn't! Oh my god, the purple coins are of course star bits. That's one of the many reasons I adore the Moon Kingdom. This is one of the last kingdoms you'll take on. In fact, you'll fight the final boss here too. To get the biggest negative out of the way, this kingdom is very vast with not a lot to do. I can tell this was done on purpose though to help build up the Bowser fight, but this is one of the smaller kingdoms and I just wish there was more to explore. But regardless, what is here is fun to find and your jumps are nice and floaty, really reminding me of Mario Galaxy. At this point in the game, you may be wondering where the obligatory lava level is, and this time, it's inside the moon's core. That is one of the most ingenious ways of implementing a lava stage. Huge props to Nintendo for thinking that one up. In the lava stage is a blast too. The music is rocking. Turning into giant bonsai bills to tear through walls is enthralling, and I even get to play as my favorite Mario Kart character, Dry Bones. And plus, the 2D section in the Moon Kingdom is one of the best. Gravity goes buck wild and she'll hop around on moon rocks collecting coins and power moons. Most of the 2D sections in this game are kind of bland and boring, but this one is much more interesting. And you just can't beat that magnificent shot of the earth below you. I mean, look at how pretty that is. I'm usually not picky about visuals, but they do matter more when you're constantly going around exploring and collecting things. So seeing stuff like this really shines. What I love the most is hopping around the wedding castle. And I mean hopping because you can turn into a frog and basically fly to your heart content. Having this much freedom to explore is just gratifying, and that reflects essentially most of the kingdoms in Mario Odyssey. And even though things are about to get gritty with Bowser, that soothing bell music keeps things very chill and relaxing. So here's one that people might not agree with me on. I've heard a lot of people say they aren't a big fan of Luncheon Kingdom. And while I wouldn't say it's my favorite, the visual style and theme is just breathtaking. We've never really seen a food theme in a Mario game before, and they made something special out of this one. Mario will be roaming around running across corn on a cob, throwing turnips and soup for moons, and transforming into lava balls to traverse the sea of pink goo. Like, what even is this stuff? I'm gonna guess it's some sort of food that's like boiling hot? 
I don't know what I'm supposed to call it. I love how the art style looks almost cell shaded but is also purposefully clunky. Just look at any of the cheese cubes and that kind of describes what I'm talking about. You'll travel with the lava balls quite often to find all the moons, but I really didn't find this annoying or slow like some have complained about. I love how you just fly through the air when jumping. It's so much fun getting all that height. And I have a new appreciation for Hammer Bros. How they manage to throw projectiles at Mario so accurately is beyond me. Like they're fun to use, but they have a learning curve if you catch my drift. I just had to throw that pun in because they throw it a curve, right? Eh? Also, can I just say how much I love that the NPCs are forks? Like they're literally talking forks with chef's hats on them. They use the little side tongs as hands and oh my god, it's adorable. You can transform into some of them too and fling yourself through the air. There's some hidden sections in the game where you'll need to accurately flick yourself from fork to fork. And I gotta say, it's nice that the game tests your platforming skills every once in a while since the platforming isn't the most challenging in Mario Odyssey. And for some reason, there's large piles of salt everywhere. I'm not really sure why. We kind of hinted at this before, but Bowser's Kingdom isn't your ordinary lava world. Instead, the theme is based off of Japanese temples, and it works well. The level is broken down into several sections, each one having tons of goodies to find and unlock. Thankfully, since checkpoints are so handy and convenient to use, you can easily move from the very bottom to the very top of the kingdom at any time. My favorite part about Bowser's Kingdom has to be these birds called Pokio. With Pokio, you can stub your beak into walls and flick yourself in any direction for a jump. This is used in so many clever ways that I couldn't list them all. You can also attack by pecking his beak forward, which is great when you want to launch those Bowser palms out of your path. This is one of those kingdoms where I really found it difficult to find all the coins and moons. Like as an example, these three purple coins are on this tiny little lamp that can only be reached by carefully jumping off this metal Bowser head. Like who's gonna see that on their first try? There's also something great about the flags. You can actually jump on them and climb around. And it doesn't even look like you can interact with the flags because they stick out kind of like decorations. The clouds are gorgeous too. They burst in blue pink, green, brown, and orange colors. I like this kingdom more than the others we've talked about simply because it's more fun to navigate. Running around on the roofs makes me feel really stealthy too, like I'm some sort of robber breaking into a bank. Oh, wait a minute. There, th there's coins on the roof. Nintendo read my mind. That's creepy, it's time to move on. Oh yes, hot mama. Now we're getting into the beefy worlds. As you'd guess, this is the Sand Kingdom, and I don't even know where to begin. All the towns you'll explore are Mexican themed. You can even buy a nice sombrero hat and shirt and have a nice little jam session with everyone. It's the silliest moon to get, but I got such a kick out of it. Also new to Mario is this lion called Jaxi. This guy has to have chugged about 12 Red Bulls, because when you hop on, he doesn't stop running. Like, ever. Your controls are moving and slowing down. That's all you got. Jaxi is great because he can run over Toxic and obviously runs quite fast. This is where you'll likely first transform into Lekitu as well. Instead of getting spinies chucked at you though, he just wants to go fishing. You can even fish in the sand. I never thought I would see the day where I'm fishing with Lekitu in a sand pit, but okay, here we are now. And plus there's our sunglasses pal Moai. This slab of a hot hunk can see invisible paths with his sunglasses on, but walks really slowly. But take those sunglasses off and he'll run like a madman. I do think the puzzles and platforming could have been more challenging with Moai, but the concept itself is really cool. And if you thought this level was hot, wait until you jump down into some holes, cause they're quite a bit cooler. The icy sections introduce capturing Goombas, which is surprisingly fun. Not only do they not slip on the ice, but you can stack up Goombas and get really high reaching coins and moons. And honestly, I didn't even mention everything that can be found in this kingdom. I do think it's a tad bit large for me, but otherwise it's a great time. Up next is the Wondrous Wooded Kingdom. What I love about this one is that it's split into large sections. You'll start out in this thick forest and you'll find all these strange robots twirling around its spot. You jump down from this level and you'll find yourself in the deep woods. This is where things get spooky. There's no music. You can hear heavy footsteps surrounding you. And what might those footsteps be? <gasps> a giant T-Rex. Thank God I can lure the T-Rex into a tree or something so he smashes his head into it and then I can capture him. But honestly guys, there is a real sense of suspense when you're trying to avoid his grasp. I mean, look at how terrified Mario is. He don't wanna be down here. I will admit though, filling up this plant with coins was seriously obnoxious. It 
it literally takes hundreds of coins before a bulb opens up and gives you a move. But anyway, moving on to the next section, we have the more mechanical side. This is where things get even better. You got this nice snazzy tune that's easy to bop your head to, and it's home to the cutest enemy ever. These little guys are called uproots, and you can stretch their legs really high to get to hard to reach platforms. What's great about the Wooded Kingdom is just the amount of depth and compactness. There's a million paths you can take in such a short span, and they all have hidden moons and coins. The combination of the forest and mechanical areas are kind of like yin and yang. They both work together in harmony. On one hand, you have the more calm, intense forest, while the other side is much giddier and frantic. And plus, navigating is very simple and doesn't require you to roam around through lava or water. Not that those are bad mechanics, but they also don't allow for as much fluidity in the kingdom overall. So yeah, this place is cool. You'll surely get lost in yourself in playing this one, because there's a ton of cool elements and ideas. I mean seriously, look at these trees. These are so freaking cool looking! This is one of the smaller, more average sized kingdoms in the game, but the luscious environment, the music, and the characters just bring me in. The main transformations are these caterpillar-like creatures called the Tropical Wigglers. Now in some circumstances, I don't need this transformation to get where I want to go, but some of the post-game segments are much easier to navigate thanks to the Wiggler. He's just a joy to use. And what's great is that when you're stretching out to grab something, you will never fall by accident because you have to cling on to land or you won't really move anymore. One of the greatest things though is gliding around with Glidin. Now Glidin can be found in pretty much every kingdom, but you'll make your first encounter here and it's just pure bliss gliding around the kingdom and landing on islands far away in the distance. But I have to ask this, how does Glidin's glasses help him at all? They aren't anywhere near his eyes, but I mean, whatever, this dude is a homie anyway. And as if things couldn't get better, they certainly do with the next few kingdoms coming up. I'll never forget that moment when I first stepped out of the Odyssey into the Cascade Kingdom. The strong, confident music combined with the gorgeous waterfalls and lively grass gave me some of the greatest goosebumps I've ever felt to an opening of a game. This kingdom lets you know that Mario is goddamn back and with a fiery passion. One of the first enemies you turn into is a Chain Chomp, but you tell him who's boss and smash some rocks to reveal a precious moon. And next thing you know, you're a T-Rex, destroying everything in your path. This kingdom is nothing but pure happiness. And like the Lost Kingdom, there's so many moons and coins hidden around in places where you have to use your noggin to find them. But instead of that instant death poison surrounding us, now it's crystal clear water. All the kingdoms I've talked about have been a lot of fun to explore and play in, but this one really stands out to me. It leaves such a great impression of what Mario Odyssey is, something different and unique. I think you all knew this was coming. Of course the Mushroom Kingdom was going to be on this list. Mario Odyssey is a callback to the original Mario 64, and being able to revisit it in a sense just shot burst of nostalgia into me. And it's not even just nostalgia that's made me love this kingdom, but almost every moon is fun to collect. And I say almost because herding those six sheep was pretty tiresome, but I mean come on. You can drain the water in the castle, you can visit the backyard, you can climb up to the top of the castle and find Yoshi, and so, so much more. I especially loved going inside Princess Peach's castle and hearing the classic song remixed in a more soft, peaceful tone. Heck, you can even jump into paintings and all the same sound effects play. Plus, you don't even collect power moons in this kingdom, you collect power stars. It's like the developers of Mario Odyssey really did grow up with Mario 64. The amount of fan service is off the charts. And what's great is that this kingdom didn't even need music. Just hearing the sounds of nature outside is perfect. And by golly, the coolest 2D section is in this kingdom too. The idea is to stay within the boundaries of this black box, otherwise Mario will turn 3D and you have to start all over again. It's really such a brilliant idea, and heck, the garden from Mario 64 DS is even in here too. Like honestly, what Mario games did in Odyssey reference? Now I'm sure you all know what number one is on this list, so let's get jinky with it. Of course, the Metro Kingdom is going to be my favorite one. In fact, it's pretty much everybody's favorite. Not only is this Mario's most original idea for a world in decades, but it's also one of the best designed ones. Mario has a huge diversity of moves that allow him to travel horizontally and vertically pretty quickly, and being able to climb and hop between buildings perfectly fits with his moveset. Like seriously, the fact that I can climb this big ass building and jump all the way down to another building goes to show how free Mario Odyssey is. And 
speaking of free, that music is seriously jamming. We have this sweet jazz tune, and it's not really like any other Mario song we've heard in the past. Now that I think about it, this music reminds me of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, but that doesn't really count. I just need to highlight some of my favorite parts of New Dog City, okay? Don't you just love how sitting on this bench next to this lonely guy makes his day so much that he gives you a moon? It's so sweet! And then there's the movie theater! Oh, what's playing, you might wonder? Hmm, how about the first level of Super Mario Bros? Oh, and guess what? You are controlling the movie! I mean, come on, how incredible is that? And what about the jump rope? It's so random, but like, come on! You can't tell me it's addicting trying to get a really high score with a jump rope. And same with the RC car minigame too! I'm not very good at it, but I've been having fun competing for a higher score against Nico BBQ and Nintendo. And then of course, you can turn into the letters of Mario. What purpose does this have? Well, you spell out his name and you get a moon. It's so dumb, but so amazing at the same time. But there is one thing that's unrealistic. When the taxis are making turns on the road, they actually use their blinkers. And as you would know, people in real life don't realize blinkers actually exist because you never see them used on the road. But I think I've gushed long enough. I've barely tipped the iceberg with why this game's kingdoms are nothing but sheer joy. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and let me know in the comments what your favorite kingdom is and why. Have a nice day, everyone. Peace out.